One of the things that I find most interesting about some billionaires is that if you say something is exclusive and only an elite group of people can have access to it, you can coerce a said billionaires to throw stacks of money at things that poor people wouldn't do if you paid them. If you've been on the internet at all today, you are probably aware that the Titan sub that was ostensibly visiting Titanic wreck has been found, and unfortunately the outcome is not good. It has imploded and taken the lives of all on board. And I want to make it clear, four of the men on this sub were victims of the greed and overconfidence of the final man, the CEO in charge of this endeavor, Stockton Rush. One victim, Suleiman, was barely an adult. And for them, I do feel sympathy. And if this incident had to result in the loss of their lives, at least it seems like it was quick and painless. But there are still families suffering, and this is still a completely meaningless loss of life. And I cannot forget the Titanic was a mass gravesite disproportionately full of poor people. The Titanic is a monument to what happens when rich people get greedy and prioritize peen measuring milestones like who can cross the Atlantic fastest or who can survive the deepest dives. In Titanic's case, it was also the de facto example people give regarding overconfidence in mechanical structures. And yet, the people on the Titan sub are victims of similar circumstances because of similar overconfidence. Rich people especially seem to enjoy pursuits where they can believe themselves the commander of natural forces. They want to defy nature's might and to come out alive on the other side. I'm deeply frustrated that things like this can result in rescue missions estimated in the millions of dollars an hour when hundreds of refugees who were just fighting for a better life could barely be afforded any concern or rescue or media attention. Yet still, I find my attention gripped by the Titan. I loved Sequest DSV as a child, but that was before trauma made me terrified of spaces I can't escape of my own. This definitely seems like a worst case scenario nightmare in my mind, being trapped at the bottom of the ocean. After spending $250,000, my best case scenario is having to smell four other grown men's feet. Thank you, next. But I have spent a lot of time working in tech and I've known a lot of CEOs who were people like Stockton and Elon Musk who seem to have less than stellar respect for things like regulations. And there are absolutely lessons to be learned by those of us who are too poor to ever consider something like this journey. The culture of risk taking is really big in wealthy folks, especially those who were born into very wealthy families. They tend to believe the rules don't apply to them and they tend to not care if the consequences impact other people. And a lot of people like this own big companies with products that normal folks interact with on a regular basis. In this instance, Stockton Rush studied the Titanic a lot. His wife's great-grandparents died aboard it, and yet he couldn't learn one single lesson about not being overconfident with a vessel's abilities or the importance of safety and maintenance features. People who don't have existence-level threats like difficulty affording rent and food go to increasingly extreme levels to get an adrenaline rush, often impacting others in a negative fashion in the process. Rush seems quite cavalier in his own right. He said, I mean, if you just want to be safe, don't get out of bed, don't get in your car, don't do anything. At some point, you're going to take some risk, and it really is a risk-reward question. He added that safety is a pure waste. Of the Titan itself, he said, I believe it's pretty much invulnerable. It's worth noting that of the 10 vessels that can go that deep in the ocean, the Titan was the only one not certified by any regulatory body. OceanGate opted against having Titan classed, an industry-wide practice whereby independent inspectors ensure vessels meet accepted technical standards, according to the Daily Mail. Leaders in the submarine industry warned the CEO that his sub was dangerous, and at least one whistleblower internal to the company had attempted to say that the vehicle was not safe, and that individual was terminated rather than listened to. And while, yes, this is about a submarine, this is about a submarine that this man literally put his life inside. If he is acting like this toward that type of a product, what are other billionaires ignoring when it comes to common household day-to-day -day products that we use? One thing I saw a lot in IT is companies removing figures that nay say, that try to whistleblow, that try to say that there's going to be problems. They get rid of departments that are supposed to do QA because they result in less profit. And a big reason for this is there have been a lot of laxening regulations that make it more profitable for them to get rid of these figures and to just eat the costs when something goes wrong than it is to do things correctly in the first place. Stockton Rush was not a poor man. He did not have to cut corners on this vessel the way he chose to, and yet he still did. 
There is an entire class of people that value their own personal net worth above the lives of others, even their own family members and themselves. The lack of empathy, the lack of regard for others, it is deeply concerning to me on many levels. There were multiple lawsuits against Stockton. The shop was controlled by a game controller. You peed and pooped in bags. You were using off-the-shelf parts that hadn't undergone testing for those depths. It was egregious how lackadaisical his attitude was. And to be honest, the controller itself isn't the thing that scares me so much as the fact that they were going to be reliant on Bluetooth connectivity. I don't even rely on Bluetooth when it's not a life-threatening circumstance. I wouldn't use a Bluetooth controller in a video game convention, let alone something that was life-altering like this. I do hope that there is an extensive investigation because Stockton Rush wasn't the only one with power at this company. The company should be investigated thoroughly. None of the negligent parties should ever be allowed to work in any type of commercial engineering again. And the more information we get, the more sad it seems, especially the information we received from Suleiman Dawood's aunt, who said that he was terrified of going on the adventure and only did it because his father was obsessed with the Titanic. This was a 19-year-old. He had just finished his first year of college. He loved Rubik's Cubes and science fiction literature. He seems like the type of guy that, if we were in college together, I would have been friends with. And it, it deeply saddens me that his life was cut so short in such a meaningless way. This was entirely preventable. I think another element of billionaire negligence is the fact that billionaires tend to trust other billionaires unquestioning. I watched a lot of the interviews with the CEO of this company and I was just thinking how much he reminded me of Elizabeth Holmes from Theranos with his just kind of bravado like rejection of common conventions and the way things were done. The red flags inherent in this scenario were obvious to basically everyone on the internet mere moments after seeing videos of this craft, so it boggles my mind that these people who were billionaires and ostensibly very capable in their own right fell for it and were okay with it. And I think this goes into another lesson about billionaires that we all need to learn, and that is that a billionaire who is an expert in one field often feels like that expertise makes them very capable in other fields as well. I think the biggest example of this is Elon Musk, who wants to make a bunch of different companies doing a bunch of different things, when his own education on any of these subjects for the companies that he's running tends to be very limited. I can only hope that this is going to cause a lot of dramatic changes, though I think that hope is a little bit misplaced. I do think that a lot of industries need additional regulations, especially ones where you have commercial tourists that are in extremely deathly locations. But also, I hope that it gives a lot of billionaires pause when interacting with fellow billionaires who may not know or do the things that they claim to be able to know or do. And I also hope that Ocean Gate sticks around as a company long enough for the surviving family members of these people to sue the living daylights out of them. It's the least that can do at this point in time. Obviously, there's no amount of money that's ever going to bring any of these people back, but it's clear that the only thing that these corporations and billionaires actually care about is money, and that unless and until they suffer financial penalties for the things that they do, for the negligence they cause, for the lives that they risk, nothing is going to change. I think back to the beginning of Fight Club, the scene on the plane where the narrator is explaining how companies will only do vehicle recalls if the amount of the recall is going to be less than the amount that they would have to pay out if victims sued them. At the time, a lot of people thought that it was a fatalistic way of viewing corporations, but as time passes and as regulations are not that much money and as, as these lawsuits can be easily batted away by corporate lawyers, companies just don't take things seriously the way that they used to. I think this is also additional evidence that people like Bezos and companies like Amazon shouldn't be able to do things like company housing because clearly billionaires can't be responsible for treating their employees well or the people around them well. 
all in all, we need a culture of caring more about one another's lives. Again, like I said, that refugee boat where hundreds of people died was happening at virtually the same time, but got nearly no press. And obviously, all human deaths are a bad thing and things that we should take pause for and mourn. And it's sad that these lives were valued above those. And just in general, the culture of lacking empathy that we have, especially in American society, it is one of the things that holds the country back the most. We people who are workers, who are not blessed by billions of dollars, need to be working together and caring for each other. And there just needs to be a bigger valuing of human life at every level. Another thing that I want to point out is every time that I say that someone has been manipulated, I tend to have somebody in the comments that says, oh, well, you must think poorly of that person if you believe they were manipulated. The assertion being basically that only people who are dumb or who are lesser can be manipulated. And I think that if anything proves otherwise, this does. These people were billionaires. A lot of them were experts, expert explorers. explorers. The one guy was like Mr. Titanic, and even he could be fooled by this billionaire and his ship controlled by a Bluetooth Logitech controller. And that says something. It really goes to show that literally anybody can be manipulated if they want to believe the person who is telling them things. Anyway, I think that's everything that I had to say about this. I just had a lot of thoughts and feelings that I needed to get out. Um, I hope you don't mind that this is a voiceover video. I wanted to try and get out something fairly quick and it's been raining, so I can't really film outside right now. So enjoy the footage of me getting my uh, gardens together earlier this year. Uh, if you like this video, please let me know by liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'm still a very small channel and it really helps me out a bunch. Thank you so very much. Bye-bye.